you got an ARV of two and a quarter, and then you had the balls to know you're going to sell for forty five thousand dollars more. That's impressive, bro. That's a good story, man. I want you to hit that hard, okay? That's, uh-huh. that's impressive, yeah. dude. <laughs> Tell me about uh, this flip, right? How did you guys decide to do this flip? Mike, I know you're in the business. You're an agent. Um, Rachel, real quick, though, what do you do? I work full-time for an insurance company here in Hartford, Connecticut. Okay. And I have a few properties on the side, but I'm not a full-time agent. Okay, so you're both, you're both, you're both in the business in one fashion or another. Mike, you're an agent. Rachel, you're in insurance and you both have property. So I guess that would be why the flip was so successful. How did you guys decide to do the flip? Like what, what, what led you to, to doing this project? Well, um, we really, the intent wasn't a flip. It was to do a cash out refi, um, to, cause we're, we're buying old investors. So we want to grow our portfolio. So, um, we went into it with the mindset that we were going to purchase it put some money into renovations and then uh, have the goal of, you know, uh, pulling out our initial capital and uh, doing a cash out refi and, and continuing to hold it and rent it out. Upon purchase, um, our money lender uh, did two appraisals. He did uh, as is appraisal and then a projected appraisal. And the projected appraisal came in significantly less than what we expected, about 50,000 less actually. Um, so the, the projected appraisal was 225, and we knew we could sell it for significantly more. So we quickly changed our game plan and we decided we wanted to flip it. Now let's talk about this hard money lender. I presume when he did these appraisals, this is prior to you closing on the sale. Now that takes some balls, right? That takes some balls. You get an appraisal that comes in, you know, around $50,000 less than what you were anticipating and you still plow through, go for it anyway, and decide to sell it. How were you so confident that you were able to sell it for so much higher than that appraisal? Because you ended up selling it at two seventy. Yeah, I mean, just from uh, being an agent, knowing the market, um, you know, having the experience of going through this, you know, going through working with other clients before, I knew it was going to, we knew it was going to appraise for, um, you know, significantly more than we could sell it. It was really just through past experience, leveraging that and, uh, you know, having the confidence to move forward with it. Now, Mike, do you think that it, it makes sense for other people out there flipping houses? Do you think if someone's, you know, watching our show right now and they're inspired by you, do you think it makes sense for them to become an agent? Will that help them in their flipping business? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. If they plan to do at least one to two flips a year and end up, you know, being the, either the buying agent or selling agent or, or both, um, I think it's absolutely worth it. There's certainly holding costs with uh, becoming an agent and getting licensed and then and hanging your uh, license up at a brokerage. But um, yeah, I mean, you can absolutely make your money back in one deal, just like we did. Now let's talk about the nuts and bolts of this transaction, because you guys killed it, right? You guys made a ton of money uh, on this particular deal. Uh, how much did you pay for the particular property? And uh, what went into the renovation? Yeah, so we paid $130,000 for the property, and we actually ended up putting $67,000 into it. Um, we, we budgeted for fifty dollars but we did go slightly over. What kind of advice do you guys have for brand new flippers? I know you, this is your first flip, but brand new flippers who maybe didn't have backgrounds in the industry like you guys. What would you say to them when they're walking through that property with their first contractor and getting that rough estimate? What advice would you give them? I mean, uh, if it's competitive as market as it is in Connecticut, specifically Central Connecticut, you really, um, I mean, you you really you want to get the property, but you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot by underestimating because you know for you to to go ahead and, and lose all your initial capital will take you ten x to get get restarted again. So you know, while you really maybe want that property, uh, you you know, do your best to budget, get the initial walkthrough, and then I'd say at least plan for a 10% margin for any overages that you could come across. And we learned that the hard way. Luckily, we had a big enough spread on our sale price where we, we more than made it for it. But you know, that's just because we knew we had the market knowledge, like you said, both, just both being in the industry. So for someone that doesn't, that may not have that insight, uh, plan for, you know, at least 10 to 15% uh, 
over than you, your normal budget. So yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And and Rachel, you had mentioned, you know, you start opening up walls, you run into little unknowns. Do you have any specifics you could kind of walk me through? Like maybe take me through like one specific unknown that was uncovered, um, just to give the folks out there listening, you know, an idea of what to look out for. Cause I feel like every flip has something that we can learn from and somebody out there might be listening to this and like, Oh, they, I never would have thought of that. Any, anything specific you can remember? Yeah, definitely. So in one of the unit's kitchens, we started ripping it apart and it was actually one of the walls was entirely rotted down to the studs. So we actually had to replace all the wood that was rotted on top of sheet rocking it. We had to make sure it was secure again. And essentially our house, if we didn't rip down that wall, the house was essentially going to fall down eventually because of the water damage. So of course, you know, when we initially looked at that kitchen, we didn't plan for restructuring the actual walls and almost basically rebuilding it so it was safe. So that was definitely an increased cost. And that's not something when you're walking through their contract, you're going to necessarily see. That's to Mike's point, definitely over budget for things like that for the unknown. Absolutely. I mean, that's a great point. And you know, there, there really is no way for you to really prepare for that, right? You know, folks, of course, you got to do your due diligence. You want to, you want to work with contractors. You want to have inspectors take a look at your houses, but you know, these contractors and these inspectors, when you're deciding to buy a particular property, they are still limited to what they can see, right? They can't see behind the walls. So there, of course, are going to be things like that. Now, moving on to something a, a, a little bit more fun to talk about, let's talk about the design, right? Looking over the before and after photos, I like what you guys did. I thought it looked very nice, very modern. Which one of the two of you decided what fixtures, what colors, and how did that all work out? Um, so we had a little prior experience with picking out fixtures for rentals. Um, we currently live in, a, live in a three family that we did some work to. So we took a lot of the things we did to this rental and we applied it to, you know, the flip. Um, with that being said, you know, some of it maybe was a, a little more my choice. Um, <laughs> like the cabinet handles, I definitely picked those out. Um, the flooring was kind of a mutual choice, but, um, we have used it before. Um, the white cabinet of what's trending right now so we definitely did that just to, to keep it modern and make it look fresh um the hardwood floors i actually picked out the color because i was there with the contractor and he was showing me the different colors of stain <laughs> so that was me but um we generally work together to to pick it out and um, we were renovating a rental at the end of the day so we didn't want to overdo it on certain things um just based off the area and the clientele um you know certain things such as laminate versus granite on your countertops that was something that you know we had to consider was it hard for you rachel maybe not on this one since you've done rentals before this one but when you first got into renovating homes was it hard for you to to take maybe take a step back and and say hey what's more popular what's neutral what are the masses going to like versus trying to put your own personal flair and your own personal design taste into the reno you ever run into that problem yeah, I mean, I've, I've definitely run into that a little bit. Um, for instance, like paint colors, um, I tested a bunch out and, you know, maybe I would have liked a little bit darker of a color or changed different rooms, different colors, but we pretty much kept it pretty neutral and selected a, a very light, basic color. We actually used Agreeable Gray by Sherman Williams, which is a pretty popular color. Generally, you know, when, when renovating this, there were certain things that I might have liked to do a little differently and spent a little more money on but I knew it was a rental and I wasn't going to over renovate it and put more money into it than it was worth so there were certain aspects of that um, but overall I'm not a very eccentric person I like things simple and clean and classy and, and I like grays and browns and whites <laughs> so um, maybe for some it might have been a little bit harder but very good that's super smart and I think what is fascinating to a lot of people about real estate is it's it's a business that you could kind of do or start in addition to your other businesses. I think that's what attracts people to flipping houses or buying rental properties. What do you prefer more since you're dabbling in three businesses, really flipping, landlording, selling properties as an agent? Wh which one of those three is your is your real passion? 
Or do you like uh, them all? It may, it may be the contrary for most, but honestly, being a landlord um, and building, you build wealth through becoming a, you know, a rental property. You can build wealth through flipping, but it's, it's, it's short. Or you can you become rich through flipping, but you can't really build long-term wealth, generational wealth um, through flipping, in my opinion. I think that what we do is we, 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 we take the profits from the flip and use them as down payments for a long-term buy whole property. So, you know, it's a quick fix with the flip, so to speak. Um, you know, you get that high that initial rush, but it, it, it quickly vanishes. And so I think with the long-term buy and hold rentals, being a landlord, um, providing a home for someone uh, is, is, is more, um, is more um, you know, worthy to me than, than just a flip. So I would say uh, long-term, long-term uh, landlord and, and property manager. So what's next for you guys? Are you guys actively looking for properties to specifically flip or are you just looking for any good deal and you'll take that deal down and position it in your various businesses wherever it fits? What, what, what's next? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're really looking every single day. Um, our goal is really to get a burr in, in the next couple of weeks or months. Uh, a couple of weeks would be ideal, but things don't always happen that quick just because of the competitive nature. Uh, but you know, if a bird doesn't work, we're not going to turn down a flip either. Um, we're constantly looking at houses. We actually just put a bid on a house. I think it was two days ago. Um, so, you know, we're constantly putting bids, constantly looking, and then depending on what number we get it out, um, we would prefer to bird to, to actually hold it, to get that long-term wealth, like Mike talked about. But if we get that low ARV again, um, we're not afraid to flip it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.